You had brought up uh, the mother having some issue with uh, the way that they raided the house, and I, you and uh, Mark Garagos were having a debate on that the other night. I believe it was on Cuomo. Um, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one, because I've heard it from from many people, too, of, you know, did they go too far in that raid? I mean, they had the big armored vehicles. It looks like they're going in for war. But, I mean, we're talking again. <laughs> The family, the kids, uh, the allegations are they had a, a an affinity for guns uh, and a lot of drugs. So I imagine a raid, if not gone in at that level, could have turned into a standoff or something going really, really bad, especially if his kids are on something and have weapons. That's exactly right. If they would have surrounded the house and asked them to come out, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, that, that could have ended so negatively. Imagine if they didn't come out. Now you have a standoff like Waco mm -hmm. uh, that could have occurred, a big compound with people with, and, and then some people and law enforcement, we know this, people take hostages. I'm not saying this would have happened, mm -hmm. but you have to count on the worst possible scenario. They get into what we call barricade situations that can last forever. And it becomes a nightmare. This was their only way that this should have been handled. I, I will. Uh, you know, uh, this is just not negotiable. Yeah. The other reason I say that is from the other side of it. You know, now working at expert witness work, can you imagine these individuals if something would have gone wrong and they didn't have the SWAT team and they weren't as well prepared as they were? I mean, they went swiftly through that house. You can tell they had the blueprints. You can tell they practiced. They just moved perfectly through that house. They did everything by the book. And if something would have gone wrong, everything they did would have been under a microscope. And so if you just would have willy nilly thrown in agents that weren't tactically trained, that would have been a mess. Or if you would have had a standoff, can you imagine a standoff? What what that would have yielded in terms of time, expense, people possibly getting hurt? So they did it right. They did it by the book, period. And there was no ulterior motive other than getting in and out swiftly. Sure. Let's talk about the actual raid itself and what they were looking for. Obviously, there's an affidavit somewhere that says, here's what we're going after. We haven't seen it yet. But when they did go in there, how difficult is it to find those sort of things. I mean, you're talking, I don't know what the square footage of these homes are, but they're freaking huge. Um, and <laughs> and I'm imagining if you have this sort of material that they're looking for, it's probably not just sitting on the kitchen counter somewhere, uh, you know, with a big thumb drive that says, you know, Diddy sex videos. Although wouldn't that be hilarious <laughs> if we find out like this is what, how <laughs> it was right there <laughs> next to the toaster. Uh, but I, I'm guessing it's probably somewhere a bit hidden away. Um, how do you go into something like that and effectively find it? Uh, obviously, a lot of things get torn up, but uh, is that just it? It's it's kind of like just start ripping things apart and keep looking, or do they have some information going in as to it's probably in this bedroom or it's probably here or there? Well, I can tell you uh, how the Bureau does it, and it's so well organized. The first thing, once the residence is in command and control of law enforcement, at that point, then uh, the first thing is photographs are taken of every room and every everything mm -hmm. in there. In addition, there's a sketch artist, because sometimes photos don't really give the exact dimensions and, and feel for a room. So sketches would be made of every single room. Each room would be given a designated letter. And that letter would, you know, so now the living room is A, so that when materials are collected, uh, you know exactly where it came from. There would be one designated collector of the evidence, even though lots of people would be searching that collector would then go to the room where the evidence is found and uh, take that evidence into custody uh, for chain purposes. So when they're looking, there is nothing that will be left unturned. They're going to look in the attic, in basements, in crawl spaces, in all, every possible place where I'm sure they had on their warrant papers and Pretty much a paper can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give them the ability to look every place in those mansions. I'm going to guess a lot of the things they were looking for uh, were digital. I mean, that's just my speculation. 
Um, especially if they're looking for these tapes, uh, these sex tapes, these security tapes, these allegations that all of these things were on record somewhere with Diddy. When you're going in and looking for that, obviously, if you're just you know looking at a computer, you have no idea what's on it or a thumb drive or whatnot. Do you just basically go in and then take every piece of electronic equipment that would be holding that or potentially holding that sort of material to go and review? Or, or do you have to say it's on this piece that we're going to take? A hundred percent, they're taking everything. Mm -hmm. Any digital device, uh, assuming that that was listed in the search warrant, they get to take any and all digital electronics. I think there, there's an actual picture of it. Looks like they just removed the video system right out of the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Seen that picture. Um, so yeah, they get to take everything, and and they'll sort it out later. If they had to go through all that digital evidence there, they'd still be there and they'd be there for months. So sure. They take it all, ferret it all out, mirror it, mirror image meaning if they can. And and then they return the devices typically to the people once the, it's completely mirrored. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Tony Bruski. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.